Watch you guys today we're taking a look at a small but powerful mini PC from TrigKey which is called the TrigKey S3. It has a Ryzen 5 processor in this model, comes very well packaged when it's delivered. You get everything inside the box that you're going to need to get up and running. This is everything here. You're going to get your user manual. This is going to give you all the information about the device itself and how to mount it to a monitor or a wall and all the features that it has on this little device. You're also going to get uh, some screws here. This is for the wall mount and some hard drives. You can see the wall mount here or your monitor mount. You've also got a little tiny um, HDMI cable here. This is a small little one. And we have a slightly larger one here, about a meter long, I think this one is. These are gold uh, tipped uh, HDMI cable. Now, obviously you can use your own HDMI cables. You're gonna get your power brick of your country of choice where you ever buy it from. It's got the barrel connector on here. Pretty nice uh, little power adapter and the unit itself. You can see this does have a Ryzen 5 and it means it's gonna have pretty good graphics on here. So you'll be able to play those games as well. On the front, you've got your USB ports. These are USB 3.0. So you've got two on the front and one type C, which is data only. Next to the type C, we have our earphone port here. And also we have a type C RTC key, which is gonna help you clear your CMOS. And you also have your power button here, which does light up. Let's take a look at the sides here. We've got some ventilation on the sides. Same is on the other side. We have some ventilation on that side as well, as you can see. And uh, moving on to the back, we'll take a look here. So on the back, we have one gigabit ethernet port and we have this expansion area here to let air out. Uh, there is a fan in here that's gonna extract any sort of heat that builds up inside these little mini PCs. We have another two USB 3.0 ports and a HDMI 4K HD, two of these on here. And we have our power adapter input here and our one gigabit ethernet port. On the bottom, we've got four screws here, which I'm gonna undo and show you inside. In here, we've got our hard drive or SSD slot where we can put an SSD in here. Maximum of two terabytes, which means you get plenty of storage on there for you. We have 16 gigabytes of crucial RAM. Now this RAM is a Sodium DDR4. Maximum of up to 32 gigs can be put in here. Underneath here, we do have a dual heat pipe uh, quite large fan to cool down the actual unit. We also have a Kingston NVMe drive in here, which is 512 gigabytes. That is a 2280 model, which should give you around about 1900 MBS, which means it's gonna give you fast read and write speeds. And you can also upgrade this if you wish. It does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on here, which is Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.0. And it has a powerful AMD Ryzen 5 3550H, which does have four meg cache and up to 4.7 gigahertz. Now the actual BIOS here is what you're seeing on the screen. You can see it does have that Vega 8 graphics on here as well. Now it does look like this is all locked down and you can't overclock the GPU or the CPU here. I did look, but this one seems to be locked. So you can see here under GFX uh, configuration here, you can't really do nothing inside here does show you the NVMe configuration here, which is your Kingston SNV S500G. So the Vega 8 graphics runs at 1200 megahertz here. And these are the specs you can expect. Supports up to 4K 60 hertz. And again, these are what you can see on the screen here. So a pretty impressive little mini PC. Let's give some benchmarks here so you can see roughly what it can do and what it can't do. So we'll first start off with their website. So you might want to know the price. It's $400, as you can see. Not a bad price for a powerful little mini PC like this. Now, you may be able to look around and find cheaper prices. I'll leave the links in the video description. But there is a lot of information about this mini PC that I might not have covered. So check that link in the video description for more details about this mini PC and where you can buy it. Okay, so let's move on to some of the uh, benchmarks here. We'll first start off with Geekbench 5 and we'll do the CPU benchmark and see what this comes in at. Now, if you're wondering about temperatures, the temperatures were pretty good when I was doing all my testing. You can see here when I'm running this benchmark, it didn't really get above 75C here, that's 75.4. Not bad for a mini PC. So let's take a look at results. Single core was 776 and a multi-core was 2419 for this little device. So pretty impressive. It also comes with Windows 11 Pro 64-bit. You can install any other version of Windows on here or any other version of Linux. 
And again, we're going to try Vulcan here and do the benchmark for the GPU. And you can see Vega graphics here. And attempts for the GPU were pretty good too. They didn't go up above too high here. It wasn't going in the red and it didn't thermal throttle. And that's a good sign. So and that was 8,402 for the Vulcan score here. I didn't do open CL this time. I did Vulcan instead. And then we've got the night raid, which was 7,928, which is pretty impressive because this is all about the GPU. So it done pretty well there. OK, so let's do some video testing now. We're going to be doing Jellyfish 140 Mbps. Uh, this is 4K Ultra HD HEVC 10 bit. And you can see here I've even jumped it to see whether it would stop and freeze. And it didn't. It played very well. And you can see we're streaming this 4K uh, 3840 uh, by 2160 at 30 FPS. And it played it no problem at all. And you can see it plays nice movies here as well. And this is 4K. You can see it's playing this no problem at all. And this is what you can expect from this. This is going to be useful for people that want to use it for some sort of media, maybe Plex, or maybe you want to stream some content down. It can handle all of this sort of stuff on this mini PC. So it's a pretty good little mini PC for a good all-rounder, which can also play games, which I'll show you in a second. Now, of course, we're going to be trying some different games here. I'll try some emulation uh, PSP. And these are the settings I was using here. And I'm going to bump this right up here so you can see the sort of settings I was using. And uh, what we're going to do is put Virtual Sync on. And I'm also going to go upscale level. And we'll probably go to something like, uh, let's try uh, four. I reckon this can handle four. So let's do four times, which is quite high for um, this type of thing. So we'll do four. And we'll do um, 1080p. So let's do 1080p and we'll leave the uh, filtering on 16 times and we'll put the show FPS. And I think we're pretty much done now. So let's go ahead and start the benchmarking for games here to see whether it can handle this. I'm pretty sure it can do and it's probably going to just be breezing through these particular types of games on here. So let's go ahead and start. So first up, we're going to try Chains of Olympus here on the PSP and this is on the emulation. And you can see here it's having no problems at all. It's maxed out at 60 because I capped it at 60. And you turned it right up the graphics and it looks really nice as you can see here. So it's plenty capable of handling this particular type of game. So I'm pretty sure it's going to handle all of the others. And you can play a lot of other types of games on this as well. Probably GameCube and other ones as well. Like Wii. Let's take a look at this one here. Again, this is 60 maxed out. No problem at all. And this is 1920 by 1080 p the same as uh, Chains of Olympus. So 1080p gaming on this is pretty good. And we've got one more here I'm going to show you. You can see Outrun here running no problem at all as well. So it can handle this particular type of emulation as well, no problem at all. And again, if you're looking for something like this that has a good all-round gaming experience, then something like this is going to be really useful for you. We're going to be playing Grand Theft Auto here as well on this little mini PC. And this is 1920 by 1080. And you can see it's having no problems with it at all. I forgot to put the frames per second up on the screen. But as you can see, it is smooth. There's no jerkiness here. And it's handling this and no problem at all. I'll quickly go in here and take a look at the graphics settings. And these little mini PCs really do impress me every time I see them. We are playing at 1920 by 1080 here. And I'm just going to bump this up a little bit more because we do have a bit of video memory available here. And what, to play this sort of game at 1920 by 1080 is pretty impressive for a little tiny PC like this. And you can see the quality settings here are pretty good. So let's go ahead and uh, save these settings and get back into the game so you can see what it plays like. And uh, it should have no trouble at all here. Now, of course, we've turned things up a little bit more. So you might get a little bit more tax in for this little mini PC, but it seems to be handling it. There's a little bit of tiny little bit of jerky or warp in there. Not too much. And that's because we've turned the settings up quite a bit. It's still handling it, no problem. So, yeah, pretty impressive stuff. So that is it for this video review 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this answers all your questions. If you need any more information, then check out the comment section and leave your questions in there. And I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If not, you can always jump on our Discord server. It's free to join. The link will be in the video description. I'll put the links in the video description for this mini PC as well, if you are interested. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.